Now we are going to go over the over, uh, overview of the operating budget preparations. Like I said, if you remember, when we start with sales budget and we go, we move on. So the sales budget is usually the first budget prepared. Once a firm can estimate sales, the next step is to decide how much to produce or purchase. Sales are usually budgeted by product or department. So what we are going to do, the first thing we are going to say, our sales budget, how many units we are going to sell. Next, we are going to start with our production budget. So with our production budget, it's based on the sales in units plus minus desired inventory build up or uh, reduction. So look for production budget, we don't say, okay, we are going to sell 100 cars, so we are going to produce 100 cars. No, we are going to say we are going to sell 100 cars, so we are going to produce 110 cars because we are going to have 10 cars as ending inventory for next year to start with. See, so in that way you need to account for the sales plus the desired inventory level that you need to have. And they are prepared for each department. They are uh, used to plan uh, when items will be produced. So the production budget will tell you, okay, when are we going to produce these items? What raw materials we need? What labor we need? What manufacturing overhead we need? What other uh, activities or costs that we are going to need for us to produce? And after that, based on it, you are going to do what? Purchase budget, because you are going to say, okay, we are going to produce these cars, we need to go and buy what? The raw materials. So based on the number of units that we are going to produce, we are going to determine how many units we are going to buy to be able to use as raw materials in the production. So that will determine what the uh, purchase budget. And from it, we are going to be able to understand what the expense budget are prepared by the department head use for sales budget uh, as a base. So here we are going to understand what are our expenses during the year for us to do to be able to do the production that we need. See how we are going to do it? And after that, we are going to say equipment uh, purchases budget or capital expenditure. See here we are speaking about capital budgeting. We are saying, okay, for us to do the production, maybe we need to buy some machines. We need, maybe we need to buy some equipment to be able to do the production. So we understand our equipment purchasing budget. And after that, we will say, okay, in that case, we want to understand our cash budget. Cash budget. How much cash we need for us to, to do the production. We need to go and buy the raw materials. We need to go and buy the equipment. We need to have to pay the salaries. So we need all these do you know all these items and we need to understand how much cash we are going to spend during the year for us to have enough cash to be able to run the operation. Okay, so in this example, they are showing you exactly how you are preparing cash budget based on all the information that you have. Let's start step by step. They are saying, for this example, assume that the company has budgeted sales. So look, they started with what? With budgeted sales. So they say budgeted sales first. They are going to say, we are going to have $9,000 for January and $9,700 for February and $13,950 for what? For March. So in that way, they are saying, this is the sales that we expect to have. So I'm, I'm saying, great. OK, we start with sales. Now what they are saying, they are saying the cash budget m m might appear as follows. They are saying here that, look, let's go first here. Sales are 50% cash sales and 50% credits. What's the meaning of it? When we are making the 9,000 here sales, we are going to get 50% cash, and 50% we are going to get it after 30 days. So what after a month from now? Because that's important for us to understand how much cash we need to be able to run the operation. So this is a good information. After that, they are saying, the 50 of each month sales are collected in month of the sales. So they are saying after, uh, after one month, and after that, 50 collected in the following month. So look what's happening. When we are making a sales, we are saying 50% we are getting the cash now and 50% later. The 50% later, 50% out of it, we are going to collect it this month and the one is going to collect it in the month after. And they are saying, for example, for February, look, for February, we are going to get 50% of January sales and we are going to get 50% of February sales. So if, so if you are selling this month, if you are selling this month, you are going to get 50% of your sales this month and 50% of the sales of last month. So let's start from here. They are saying beginning cash balance. So for January, we said this is the beginning cash balance. We have 80. This is, we are speaking, I think, maybe 1,000. No, just uh, we have 80. Now we are saying how much we are going to collect from sales. 
So how much are we going to collect? Why are we collecting here from cells? So this is for us, we are using what we are using, what happened last month, and we are using what happened this month. So we said, this is how much we collected from cells. And after that, we said, okay, based on that, we have payments. We need to pay for purchases, salaries, equipment, supplies, see all these payments, and this is the ending balance. See, we are creating a budget. Why? You don't want to be short here. <laughs> Because if you are short here, the meaning that you can't pay your expenses. So we have 20, 20 uh, left here. We start with the 20 here and we say, okay, now we want to calculate what the, the, the sales for February. Look how they are doing it. They are say, gonna say, we are gonna get 50% of the sales of January, 50% of the sales from January. So what is the sales in January? 9,000. So we have 9,000, you are t take, getting what? 50% of it. And after that, we are taking 50% of February, and we are gonna come up with our n numbers, which is the co collection from sales. And after that, we account for all our expenses, and we come up with the ending balance. And we use the ending balance, we do the same thing. See how we are preparing cash budget? We're using all the numbers that we need to use to, for us to be able to figure out the amount of cash that we are gonna need. So if you discover, when you are looking, we are doing budget, we are still where? We are still, we are still maybe in, in, uh, in December when we are doing this. See, we are still in December. This is what we expect to happen. This is the budget, the plan for the future. Now, if we discover that this is gonna be negative, what should we do? We should add more cash at the beginning. See, so that will help us to understand if we are gonna be short here, we need to add more cash at the beginning. See, that will help you really understand, okay, if I say, by March, I really need to, to get some money from the company, can I? Yeah, we have 2,000, I can take some money out. See, that will help you plan the cash, do cash management. As a financial manager, you need to be able to do cash management. So this will help you really understand how to manage the cash in your company. Okay, now we are gonna start step by step with preparing an operating budget. So like I said, with the operating budget, the uh, sales budget is what is the starting point. You start with sales, so the sales budget is the starting point. So let's see this example for sales budget. So look how we look at it. Sales budget must be, uh, uh, like, must state exactly the projected unit sales and the dollar revenue. So we are saying, we want to understand the sales budget here. Projected sales unit, we are saying in April we are going to sell 1,000. Selling price 400. So what is our projected total sales? 400. May, 1,200 uh, with 400. June, 1,800 1, with 380. So in that way we sold during the second quarter 4,000 for this amount. See how we do? This is the sales budget. You do the following. For sales budget, you say how many units we are gonna sell them, how much. Easy, right? It's very easy. You say how many units we are gonna sell, how much. And you can come up with your sales budget. You are gonna use this information for you to create what's your production budget. So we go to production budget. For our production budget, we are gonna say how many units are we gonna sell? We said 1,000, perfect. But how many units I'm gonna produce I'm gonna say, for me, I want always to have 10% of next month's sales as, as what? As desired ending inventory. See, so I want to have in my inventory what? I want to have some extra. So I will, run, I will not what? Run out. So if I don't want to run out, I'm gonna say I'm gonna have 10% of what? Of the next month sales. So here, I want in that case for me, to, to sell 1,000 this month, and plus I want to have 10% uh, of next month, and so in that way, this is the total needed for production. This is how much I need for me to produce this month. And after that, I will say, okay, what is the beginning inventory? How much do I have right now? We will say, we have right now 100. So in that way, I just want to produce 1,020. So this is how many I want to produce. Why? I always use this method. See what I use? I say, how many units I need? They say this amount, okay. How many units I need to have at the end? See, because these units I need, I'm gonna sell them. 
So how, how many units I'm going to have in, in my inventory after this? Plus how many units I have right now? This. So in that way, I'll be able to come up with what, with how many I produce. Do you remember we, we spoke before that for me to be able to understand always anything, I will do the, the following, I will say. I will say, I will start with what? I will start with how many units I'm going uh, to, I'm going to have left a plus. I'm going to add to the name how many units I, I'm going to need less than the unit that I have at the beginning. So now we come up with the direct material and direct labor budget. Direct material, direct labor budget. Look what we said. We said unit to be produced, 1,020. So I want to produce 1,020 units. Now raw materials per finished goods, so I'm going to say, for me, raw materials per finished good, total units needed for production. So what I'm saying, for each one unit, I need four units of raw materials. See, for each one unit, so that way I will multiply, I want to produce 1,000 units approximately, multiply by four, I need to buy these raw materials. But wait, I want to understand also what the cost. So how much is going to cost me each raw material, $12, so in that way this is my total cost for raw materials. This is how much it's going to cost me to buy raw materials. Clear? Now I will go a step further, I will say, but wait, I want maybe to have more raw materials because what, I may need some raw materials next month and I don't want to wait until they get, I want to have them in my inventory. So what we said here, we said in my inventory, I'm going to have 20% of the, what I'm going to need next month. See, I'm always thinking ahead. So in that way, I will add exactly this and I will do the same thing. I will come up with what? The, no, here I'm adding directly the cost. So this is the cost that I need to add. So now I have here total needs for this month is 5,088. So 5,088, it's exactly how much I need for this month. It will cover what I'm going to produce and will give me a little bit extra for next month. Now, I need to see what, how many do I have right now? We said right now in, in my warehouse, in my company, I have what? I have 400 already. So in that way, I need to take this out of my calculation. What's the meaning of 400 here? I have 400 worth of raw materials, not 400 units, 400 worth of raw materials. So in that way, I need to take it out. After, after that, that will tell me exactly the raw materials to be purchased, how much I need to spend to purchase these raw materials. And where is that? Yeah, the raw materials to be purchased. And, and that will determine the raw material cost. No, in this example here, they are using the numbers. They are not using the actual dollars amount. So here, when they are adding the desired level, they are adding the desired level in units. And they, after that, they are adding the units that I have left. And after that, they are multiplying them by the cost for me to figure the cost. You can do it in any way. You can use the number of units or you can use the cost. So can you see here at the end, we have raw materials uh, that I'm, the cost of raw materials that I'm going to purchase this amount. So by the end of the month, look, I know exactly how much I'm going to spend to buy raw materials. How m many raw materials I'm going to buy? Can you see how it's really nice? You start with sales, you go to production, you go to what? To direct materials, and you figure out how much you are going to buy. Clear until now? Now we go, so this, OK. Let's see. See, we went over, if you, if you look at it, we went uh, over for April, for May, for June, and after that we figure out exactly how many, uh, uh, for example, raw materials costs that we are going to have for the whole quarter. And after that we figured out the cost of raw material purchase for each quarter. Now, we did this for what? For raw materials A, for the first raw material. Now, if you are going to do the, raw, uh, the same thing for raw material B, the same thing. You say, okay, this is how many units I'm going to produce. This is how many units I need for, uh, how many raw materials I need for each unit. You multiply it, you come up with the number. How much is going to cost me? You figure out the cost. You say, okay, what is the desired level? You take this, which is 20% of what, of what you are going to need next year. And after that, you say, the total need is this. How much do I have right now? 200. Less, I will come up with what the raw materials to be purchased, and after that, I will say raw materials per unit, which is 10, I will come up with a cost. 